Well, hey folks, and welcome back to the channel. As always, it's a Wednesday morning. It's about 9.30 here on the East Coast of Australia, and I am so happy to be here with you. I'll be honest, uh, that whole recap thing where I usually fill you in on what I've been doing since Sunday, uh, not happening this week because I've done nothing. I've literally done, I, I've fiddled around, I've done a few things, but nothing of note. But yeah, generally speaking, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I do have some news in terms of the film and creator world, which we'll get into in a little bit. But let's let's start things off the way we normally do with a quick reminder that, uh, yeah, be active in the chat, throw in any questions, any comments, anything that you wanna talk about, make sure you throw that in there. And yeah, let's do the coffee thing. So whatever you've got with you, whether it is cool, whether it is bubbly, whether it is hot, whether it's milky or black, whatever, I don't mind, I don't care. Enjoy yourself. Let's partake. Mm. Oh, that is good. That is good. I'm going back for more. Mm. Quick welcome to all the regular faces. Let me just scroll up a little bit because it starts off with Rifleman, way way early we had a uh, beard of vape god you've you've changed your name but you're still you're still you're still a vape god to me uh we've got mozzie we've got our good friend twin cam aileen is there mozzie's there bradley has joined in that's good to see good glad you're here uh coming in late we've got james r brian ferguson and of course qa vaping in the house i'm sure more people will join us as time goes on but uh, yeah let's get into this um in terms of what i was saying yeah, I've, I haven't really done uh, anything productive, although I did start setting up some film stuff over here that you can't see, just uh, experiments, ideas, playing with stuff, as I'm always doing. But yeah, like I said, nothing really, um, nothing really, really huge. Uh, but I have been paying attention to the news. And if you are, um, if you are a content creator, a filmmaker, a photographer, or uh, anything in that realm, you know what this time of year means. This is the time of year where we all start bemoaning our bank accounts, when we all start uh, gaining that incredible lust for that brand new, shiny, new piece of gear. Of course, NAB is on in the States, which is the, I uh, can't remember what it stands for, National something, something, whatever it stands for, it doesn't matter. It's the big film uh, expo that happens once a year and all the new products that are uh, coming out or just released uh, all get launched there. And there are so many, so many things that have come out just over this past week. One of which, kicking kick me, kicking me, just finally jumped into that 360 world, got myself an Insta360 X3, which uh, tops out at 6K for a resolution for the full 360 image. Of course, once you've cropped it down and exported, it's gonna be much less than that. What they've just released, yeah, the X4, the 8K version, 4K single camera, 8K for the full 360. Yeah, it's a thing. You know, inevitably, as soon as you buy something, something better is going to come along. It's just, it's just what you got to deal with. I'm not worrying about it too much. The nice thing is that when they launched it, they actually launched a plug-in for Premiere. Up until now, you've had to either use their app or you've had to use the uh, GoPro plug-in to actually crop the footage and, and uh, sort of keyframe it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but they've launched their own dedicated Premiere plugin, which I haven't played with yet. I've installed it, but I haven't played with it. So that's kind of nice. It's a, I get a little bit of a bonus out of it, even if I'm not getting the full 8K. Uh, other news, Small Rig have released a range of products, some of which may interest you guys. One of which is... Uh, what they've done this year is they've partnered with other creators, so it's other YouTubers and Small Rig uh, to create signature editions. Uh, Potato Jet, if you're a film and, and video fan, you'll know Potato Jet. Uh, he's uh, come up with a tripod with them, uh, and Brandon Lee, there's a couple others that I don't care about, but Brandon Lee's come out with a, um, it's basically a camera cage mount for, um, Phones. If you're into phone filmmaking and phone videography, um, that that's what this is for. Which it's got a handle, and you can. I think you can put a special. I think it takes an M2 drive. Actually, I think I remember seeing that the handle takes an M2 drive that you can attach to your 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 phone. So that's kind of interesting. 
Uh, Black Magic really, really surprised us. Uh, if anyone's been following this for a long time, of course, you might have seen the cameras that I use. Uh, the Blackmagic 6K and 4K that I have, there's also a higher version, the 6K Pro. Um, doesn't add anything that I need, so I didn't, uh, didn't really grab it. Matthew just popped in to say hi, off to sleep. Now, dude, nice to see you. Go get some sleep, rest yourselves. Back to what I was saying, these cameras, the, the pocket cinema camera range from Blackmagic, they are shaped somewhat like a DSLR. That's one right there. Can you see that? Probably not. Let me just take it off here. See, quick release for the wind. Forget about the uh, really long lens, but yeah, it's shaped like a DSLR. A lot of people complain about that. A lot of people have an issue with that, especially independent filmmakers who want a more boxy square uh, model that they can rig up, they can add things to, they can do all sorts of filmmakery sort of stuff. Uh, I hear you. someone's at my door. It's probably going to be mail in a second. Anyway, um, the whole point is is that they've come out with a, a bunch of new cameras, a series of three that are all identical. They're 6K. They're pretty much identical to that camera in terms of the guts, but they're shaped like a box. So they've answered people's needs. Of course, the forums are full of people complaining because that's the way people are. But that's very, very interesting. It's coming in, I believe, an L mount, an EF mount, and PL, I think is the third one. Um, the other thing that they've done is that they've announced a new Ursa 12K, which is awesome. Uh, it's, it's a higher level camera. I mean, we're talking about $17,000. It's, it's out of my range. And coming later this year, they will have a 17K Ursa that will be, I believe, twenty-three to twenty-five thousand. Talking American dollars here, um, which for a seventeen K is a damn good price. You got to keep in mind that if you're delivering, say you're delivering in four K, a seventeen K is enough to film someone from across the room and zoom into their face without losing any quality whatsoever. It's it's absolutely absolutely phenomenal. Uh, absolutely overkill for me but yeah just beautiful piece of gear so that's the uh the news from them there was one other thing that i wanted to mention oh adobe adobe have made their announcement hold on I need a sip of coffee before i get into this now this gets controversial for a lot of people in the world the future of creative um filmmaking and stuff is all evolved into this adobe have announced that they are beta testing currently and will be releasing soon um, an update to Premiere, which will include a number of AI features. The ability to generate AI B-roll within Premiere on the fly, right on the spot there, just like you're filming something and it's like, I need a shot of, of coffee brewing uh, espresso into a red cup, boom. Oh no! Make it more, make it more soft focus from a, to a top angle. Boom, done. Like right inside it. Uh, I don't think I'll use that too much, but that is that's a game changer for a lot of people. The other thing is anyone who knows uh, Photoshop knows Content Aware Fill and Object Removal. Well, that's coming in an AI version, both removal and creation in a scene so you could highlight an area and get rid of stop signs or um, pipes or anything you could just remove it in video this is a phenomenal phenomenal tool it's something i use and have used for ages in in photoshop but in video it's very very difficult to do it seamlessly without it looking weird so yeah really really excited about that of course as i said uh, very controversial the introduction of AI into filmmaking, uh, just like photography. A lot of people are scared of it. A lot of people are angry about it. A lot of people don't like the idea of AI taking away from their work. Uh, my take on this is that uh, you can feel how you want to feel, but it is what it is. It's here. It's going to become more and more integrated. It's going to be what what is, is running through everything. So your choice is to either go hide under a rock or embrace it and use it. Um, it's, just, it's just the way things are now. Just kind of like 
the um, the int- I was th- talking to someone the other day. It reminds me an awful lot about the introduction of, refri- of refrigerators, in that we had a massive, massive industry. I think, especially specifically the states, a massive industry of people creating ice, shipping ice. Uh, special vehicles were made for the delivery of ice. Uh, delivery ports were built into the front of buildings in cities to receive ice to keep your food cool, to keep your food safe to eat. And they introduced the electronic refrigerator and literally within two, three years, an entire industry decimated. But an entire new industry arrives. So, and then has its own ancillary things. Instead of delivery drivers, we now have retail and marketing and stuff. Um, Change the game completely, but you're still at the end of the day, keeping your food safe and keeping your food cool. Uh, I think I view AI in creation and art being very much the same. Can't really see where we're going to be, but it will change the game. And there's really is no, um, no, there's no fighting it. You need to get on board with it, I think, I, I really think. Yeah, Brian Ferguson, it has an impact on copyrighted works, which may lead to more litigation. Uh, absolutely, and our current copyright laws don't reflect re- the reality that we live in, and that's, that's been obvious for quite a while, just as our current, or not, our then current uh, distribution and music licensing laws didn't really reflect the reality of the internet. And it took us a while to get our heads around that. Even now, it's not great. We still need to improve it. Uh, AI will impact a lot of things. And uh, don't, don't get me wrong, it will impact a lot of things. There is a massive section of industry production that will disappear just because there's no need for it anymore. Consumers will go to, sorry, burpee time. Consumers will go to AI and, and get it there. Um, that said, there's always going to be room for creative people. And the bottom line is that if you don't want to deal with AI, if you want to do things the old way, you are happy and free to continue to do so. I have a friend in town here. He loves film photography. He loves the archaic ways of doing it. He's got his own uh, black room, dark room, sorry. He's got his own gear there. He's got a ton of old film cameras of all sorts of types. And he loves that. That's his passion, and he keeps it alive, and he's free to continue to do, it, to do that. That doesn't really translate very well to commercial photography. He's not doing commercial photography, and I think that's the thing. People are scared that uh, money-making efforts will disappear. It's like, no, they won't. You can still draw, or there are other ways you can make money, but it's not going to be the same. It's weird. Cool Tech Dreamer, um, why is the like button always broke for me? I don't know. I have no idea. But I appreciate your your attempts anyway. That's all that matters is that you tried. So I appreciate it. Uh, Let me just go back up to there and see what I missed in the um, the chats. We have Cicero, member for 26 months. Fnord, good to see you, my friend. Bradley, thank you for reminding me. NAB is the National Association of Broadcasters. Yeah, it's a big show. I'd love to go one year, but uh, it's probably not going to happen. But yeah, lots and lots of gorgeous things. Lots of drool-worthy, lust-worthy things appear there. And trickled in and out of there, underneath, hidden away in the corners, are all the things that either are going to be really big in 10 years or are going to completely fail, but they're just weird and interesting. Um Kind of like Nam, the guitar or the music version, same thing. There's always like some weird stuff in the corners there. Twin Cam, I always r- lust for new things. It's called retail therapy. I to, trust me, I totally understand. I'm just saying that when there's this rush of of product hitting your feed, uh, yeah, all of a sudden it's like, oh, if I sell this and I lose a kidney and I I uh, prostitute myself for a while, I could get that camera. Yeah, not gonna happen. Let's see what else is going on. BBG, I really want an Insta360 Ace Pro. Yes, the, you know, I I was considering it. If it wasn't for the fact that I wanted an actual 360, the full 360 experience, 
Uh, just for an action cam, the Ace Pro looks to be one of the best on the market right now. Of course, these things do change over time. Other things come out, but the Insta, the, especially the Pro, not just the Ace, but the Ace Pro, that's the one. Looks like, a, look, if you need a small, lightweight, portable camera with good quality, yeah, you can do a lot, lot worse than that. Cool Tech Dreamer, is it time change again or am I dumb? You're not dumb. It's uh, it's that combination of, I think, America just jumped, we jumped. Um, yeah, there's been a couple in the last couple of weeks where the time has shifted. But don't stress it. This is it. This is the time. As far as I know, unless you have local time shifts, this should be it for the next six months. Um, BVG. Don't worry. Don't worry. Get yourself some sleep. You deserve it. And I'll catch you on the replay. Cool Tech Dreamer. It allows me to like, which I just did. It just doesn't count up more. Yeah, it might just be a, a display glitch. I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You know, like I said, you try. That's the important part. And if it doesn't, if the count doesn't adjust, uh, either refresh the page or, or don't stress. As long as you're watching the show and enjoying yourself. Anyway, when it comes to interesting things that I probably won't get my hands on, as far as I've seen, those are the major highlights. There's always little bits and pieces coming up. Various people announce things. I think uh, Lau announced a new lens, I think, um, et cetera, that sort of stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't go too, too crazy about it. There are... Um, some good things to say about the the black magic cameras and i was quite interested on the day they announced and then a little bit of thought a little bit of consideration and i realized that as long as as long as the cameras i've got are still working i have no need to really replace them and i don't really have a need for a a rig worthy uh independent filmmaker style box cam uh there are other things that can do me a lot better so not really going to jump for any of those products, really. Although it's nice to see them on the market, and they're available in the future if I decide to go for it. Um, what else do I want to say about all of that? Not a huge amount. Kind of interested in that small rig uh, phone rig, but it's hard to tell if that's something that I'm just thinking, well, I could get a video out of that, or... That's kind of cool new stuff. I like small rigs. Should I buy one of those? Will I actually use it? Will I use a phone making film rig when I have better cameras already? So I think not. I think not. I think it's more of a just shiny, shiny new stuff. Anyway, with all of that, yeah, not much else to get into with, with the, the gear stuff or the, that, except to say that, yeah, my lens that I mentioned the other day. Um, right there. It turned up. Yes, it's another, uh, it's another Takamar. Um, this is the 28 mil Takamar. Came to me all the way from Japan. It's absolutely in beautiful condition. The uh, gears are nice and smooth. Built like a tank. Really, really looking forward to um, getting out there and doing some, some, some photography probably in the next week or two uh, with that lens. I really want to put it through its paces, but I, I need... Actually, I've got a spot in mind where there's a beautiful old decaying rail bridge i want to grab some shots of that so a little bit wider wider angle than than the, all the 50s i've got uh twin cam gonna make a lot of money using it for it to be worth it yeah exactly exactly or <laughs> be fucking loaded the uh the 12 or the 17k the 17k is not out yet but the 12k yeah there's there's absolutely no there's no reason why i need or could use a lens or a lens, a, a camera body of that quality. It's just, it's just way more than I need. It's to, to be honest, I mean, it's, it's designed for filmmaking. So half my rigging, it would just be way too large for the, um, the new, uh, what's it called? The Pixis line, the intermediate. So they're all six K's. Um, they're a lot more appealing to me. I could actually use them. They're only, uh, they're about three grand American. So that would be just in the ballpark, say four and a half or five grand uh, Australian, which isn't too bad for a 
camera of that quality with that amount of flexibility and etc but again not really something that i need i, I have a i have a 6k there i have a 4k here the output is the same quality of files they have the same resolution etc they just require a little bit more attention when it comes to rigging and stuff they do they do fine uh do that front element look really yellow let me just double check i haven't really tested it out yet Huh. Oh my gosh. Hard to say with the white light. Yeah, it looks a little bit yellow. Just a little bit, not too much. Uh, if anyone's curious what uh, what Twincam's on about, Tacomars, uh, especially the super multi-coated, they have a thorium-based coating. Thorium is radioactive, and it's not dangerous or anything, but it, it is... a the basis of the coating for reducing flaring and stuff like that. And over time, the thorium tends to yellow and you can get a real yellow tinge on your, your lens. A lot of people take a lot of time to um, uh, white, no, to clear it up. You can, you can use ultraviolet light for that. I don't worry about it too much with most of them because generally speaking, I like the added sort of yellowy feel. It's a bit warmer, et cetera. Yeah, warm cream. Um, and with white balance, proper white balancing, it should take care of most of the issues anyway. Yeah, but like I said, I haven't really got to play with it too much. Curry is here. Curry, good to see you. Anyway, with all of that said, uh, as I say each and every week, Make sure you're active in the chat. Throw out some questions, anything, comments or, or stuff. Yeah, clearing up the yellow removes character. I mean, the lens has its own feel, et cetera. I think that a brand new off, off the conveyor belt lens would have had a lot of character of itself, but definitely it removes a lot of, of what's, what it's acquired over the years. Let's put it that way. A lot of that, um, yeah, character. Let's, let's just leave it at that. Absolutely leave it at that. I'm almost done my coffee and we're only a couple of minutes in. My God. Hmm. Let's see. Oh my gosh. I've run out of things to say. I've shared everything I was going to share with you. You need, you need to be active. Ask me questions, please, please. Otherwise it's just me looking at you. Um, and desperately trying to think of what else. I, uh, I can, I can, um, can share. I can't really think of anything else in terms of, of gear, like what I've been paying attention to out there. I think we talked about everything that we need to with, with the, uh, the NAB releases, um, in terms of what I've been doing, like I said, not really that much. I kind of took a lazy day on Monday, uh, thought about planned a few things, et cetera. And then, um, set up a little filming section here, new horses and stuff to do some green screen product work just to, to experiment a little bit. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's about it, really. Uh, Twin Cam, uh, do I need more mech mods and why do I need them? Oh, actually, that does raise an interesting topic we'll get into in a second. Do you need more mech mods? Of course you do, because you want more mech mods. Need, want, in, in, in that realm, just like I need more lenses. Does it make a difference? Can I shoot without them? Yes. Am I perfectly capable of doing everything I need to without buying another single lens? Absolutely. Do I need more lenses? Yes. The, those shelves are way too empty. There, there needs to be more lenses there. All sorts of lenses. Do you need more mech mods? 100%. You're, you, you, you're nowhere near, near capacity yet. There you go. That, that's your answer. I'm an enabler. And if, if mech mods is what you want, then I will agree with you. You absolutely, absolutely need them. Um, QA Vaping, a little vape news. Our new venture received its first vape-related import yesterday. Uh, you have me intrigued. I don't know quite what you're talking about, but vape-related import, is that's interesting. That's very interesting. Um, yes. 
<laughs> Twin Cam, thank you. I will replay this for the missus when she asks why the fuck I bought more. To be honest, for everything that you need, whatever she needs is fair game too. There's a balance here, right? You got to balance it out. She needs, she needs treats and shinies, whether you understand it or agree with it or not. Completely irrelevant. She needs them just like you need Max. Keep it fair. Make sure you, you let her know that. Um, take us to the kitchen. My camera is fixed. Taking you to the kitchen means me yelling from the other room. We don't, we don't need that. Um, Brian Ferguson, in reference to AI, what's your thoughts about the use of AI on almost all newer cell phones? We can get into that in a little bit. Hold on. Good man, Twin Cam. Never told her no on anything. Absolutely. My wife says, oh, I should get something. I'm like, you deserve nice things. Every time. You deserve nice things. You get nice. One, it does me well because the more she gets, the more I deserve because it's a balanced thing. But also, I like to see her happy. I like to see her get stuff. I like to see her enjoy stuff. I think she does deserve nice things. So that's, that's awesome. I'm glad we're on the same page with that. Back to the AI question. Brian Ferguson I'll actually pop that on the screen so we don't lose track of it. In reference to AI, what's your thoughts about the use of AI on almost all newer cell phones? Look, first, before we even get started, let's, let's, let's define the phrase because we're using, and this is very, very common these days. The older you get, this will happen all the time. We use the phrase AI, standing for artificial intelligence. It does not mean what us old farts, especially those of us who grew up watching uh, sci-fi movies and books. It does not mean what you think it means. It's not Hal. It's not the main characters in any William Gibson book. It's not the operating system for the replicants in Blade Runner. AI is not the, as is being rolled out and developed right now in the world. It's not that same thing. It's not an individual synthetic based nebulous sort of coded life form in 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 all of history of, of fiction ai has always been presented as an actual entity it has sentience it has consciousness it has um uh what's not not motivation something along those lines it is that AI is we're developing it. It's 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 advanced software. It's advanced tools. It's able to learn and grow and change a little bit, but it's it's nowhere near that level of sentience that we're talking about. Even though sometimes it can interface with us, such as Chat GPT, in a way that it seems like it is. <clears throat> so we're we're at a cusp right now and have been there just leading up to it, I guess, for the last year, year and a half, which is the result of lots of work before. Um, we've had uh, software development, coding development, and technological um, integration in our lives for the last, let's say, 30 years. Let's just give it a 30-year period where it has been increasing more and more and more. I do remember a point where um, it felt very strange. I was walking around and all of a sudden one day I realized that as I'm walking past a bus stop, there's an ad for a company and down in the corner was their Facebook page, Facebook logo, Facebook page address for, for like a major company, not even just a little local one, major international company. And everywhere I went, it was all of a sudden it was Facebook on everything. It was like, and that felt like a really weird shift. All of a sudden, the internet was much more integrated into our daily lives. Um, I remember when I got my very first, I, th I got a code for Amazon for something. I, I, I did something for someone. They paid me with a code. And I, it was 20 bucks or something. And I was this was way, way back when I was in Vancouver. And um, yeah. Buying a t-shirt from Amazon being shipped from the States was a weird thing to do. People looked at me strange, like my friends and family. It's like, like, why did you just go downtown and buy a shop? It's like, no, because it's coming from the States and you can't get it here. And, it's, it, 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 and I ordered it on the computer and like, that's weird. 
Um, the whole idea of computer dating when we were young was just so strange. It was like, you can't meet a girl in real life. You have to go on the computer. That's weird. Now, people have entire relationships. They have friends. Look at us. You and me, all of us, friendships, serious friendships. I love Bertie to death. He's my brother. I've never been in the same room with the man. He lives down the hill, which means like 12 hours away. But we know each other from the internet. Um, so technological integration in our world. Um, software development that has grown and become more, um, let's say, uh, beyond integrated, entwined with everything that we do. It's inevitable, it's, it's part of it. And tools have gotten better and better and better. And we used to have sort of dumb tools, tools where you could set a system of rules and you'd have to program charts and then it would just churn over. The difference is, is now we have software that can evolve. It can, it can develop its own rules based on input and output and what's happening in a situation. So that's what we're seeing right now. I know this seems all, all quite high-minded and, and not really focusing on what you're saying, but AI in phones, it's inevitable. And this is where I was talking about before about people with, with the arts uh, realm. AI, there are people who are complaining, like they said, t t uh, complaining t uh, about Adobe for putting AI in Premiere. It's like, yeah, I'll never thank you for uh, enabling the end of my profession. It's like, if it's the end of your profession, it means that you have blocked yourself to it and you're not growing because things will need to, to shift. AI will, hey, Bertie, I, pre I agree with you. We need to remedy that somehow. We need to remedy that without effort, how can we do that? AI is going to be in your toaster. Just like they used to say, uh, the internet of things, and I know I was bemoaning it the other day, but it is, as I was talking about, I, I, I started to realize that, oh yeah, it kind of is there, not exactly the way we thought, he's a bit of a claim, and it's becoming more, and the same will happen with AI. It will be in your bank machine. It will be in your till at work. It will be in the vending machines. It will be part of your TV. Your TV will eventually be able to alert you. Oh, that show that you like, it, you, you, you couldn't find season four of it. It's now available on the ABC app. Would you like me to switch over to that and watch it now or just add it to your list? It'll know. It'll be like, hey, I noticed that you watched three shows with Olivia Coleman. You seem to really like her. Just want to let you know that she used to be on Peep Show, and it's over on the ABC app right now or the Netflix app or whatever. Like your TV will be smart, paying attention to what you're doing, and will spit back recommendations based on what you do and what you do normally. And if you normally only watch TV in the evening, it's going to change how it reacts to you based on that. And if you normally every Thursday your wife's out so you watch action movies because she doesn't like action movies, when Thursday comes around, it's going to start recommending more of that because it knows that pattern. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be integrated into your phone. Google, which is the company that changed the paradigm, the reason they're so huge is that they presented that single white page, single white page with a single box and one little logo because all the other search engines before were just so busy, so messy, so hard to use. They stripped it down and cleaned it so that all you had was a box. You type in your question, it gives you the information. That concept was a massive paradigm shift and that's why Google became dominant because that was easy, that was simple. Alta Vista was ugly and difficult to use. Yahoo was complicated and, and you'd get lost just trying to figure out where to type anything in on the page was hard. Google, clean, stripped down, simple. Google is now losing. Google is history, Google is done. They need to do something else because their search engine is losing ground to chat GPT because pulling out your phone and pulling up Google and going tap, 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 tap is way too many steps when chat GPT or something similar can be hard coded to a side button, you don't even need to lift it up. 
hit the button, ask the question, how many centimeters in a mile? Click. It will verbally tell you and print it on the screen at the same time. Like it will do that. I mean, we've been using Google and we've been using all sorts of stuff for so long, but yeah, that integration into our, let's admit it, our personal tricorders. Yeah, it's gonna do that. Um, what's his name? Squidly was just in Japan. You know, he went this year, a year and a half from now. Yeah, he'll be sitting there going, translating. He'll talk into it, it will order for him. They'll tell him how much, it will show it on the screen. He'll pay. It'll do that back and forth thing. I mean, we've already got those things where you can do reverse image searching and stuff through Google, but it's going to get so, so much better. Like AI is going to integrate into every single level of our lives. It's inevitable. We can't hold it back because this is a pattern, a, a, a path that we chose as a society decades and decades ago. And we're just continuing down that line. Anyway. <laughs> Cicero. AI is like reverse Hitler to me. We're waiting for it to kill everyone, but it keeps making art. Yeah, and there is, there is that other argument where it's like, you know, we all thought that AI would do all the shitty jobs so we'd have time to create art and write poetry, and now we're doing all the shitty jobs so it can create art and write poetry. It's true. Absolutely true. Yeah, twin cam, VHS tapes, dating services. Yeah, absolutely. I remember all that. <clears throat> and the thing is, at the time, people made fun of it, and then it became a little bit more, okay, it's a little bit less. We have some examples of, of this working, and then internet was the next thing of that. Yeah, I mean, we, we are a weird species when it comes to all of that stuff. Rifleman! I am far from home, just dropping by momentarily to show support. I do appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Rifleman, I cannot even pronounce that, that line, but an appliance company of Japan put fuzzy logic in a rice cooker years ago, and they are still using it, implying it helps. Look, I, whether it's good or only a little bit good, even if it's only a, a few percent better, uh, they... They tried, they're sticking with it. Uh, these things, they're definitely going to happen, definitely going to happen. The gear that we're using now, the hardware we're using, obsolete before you even buy it. The next stage is already in progress. And better believe that, uh, like I said, AI in some form or other, a way of adjusting things. And the idea is that it pays attention to you and your needs and your wants. So if you talk to people a lot, a lot, like imagine this, I mean, it sounds weird, but uh, if you're on, on Messenger a lot, plug in an AI and let's let it watch you for a week and then step back and it will just start answering for you because it knows what you sound like and it knows how you feel and it knows your scheduling. Um, that sounds a bit weird, but I, I see these things coming. Kerry, I'm not sure what you're, you're, you're on about there in terms of using your cell phone as a router. But as long as you save money and it's working, that, that's, that's fine. Yeah, 20, 2011, that, that's a fairly old router. That's getting a little bit old these days. I mean, that's, uh, was that 13, 13 odd years old? Um, yeah, protocols have changed. You can get much, much better performance out of a newer one. But... Um, you know, like I said, as long as it's working, uh, we are going to be in a weird spot. Like I said, because I think I've, ta I've talked about this before. We have infrastructure. We have the existing layout of things. And then we have the better way of doing things that comes along. And it's hard to integrate that with the old sometimes. A lot of people have old gear, et cetera, old laptops, et cetera. I've got a couple sitting here that are just, they're kind of virtually useless because, you know, they're running Windows 7. And it's like, that's way too old. Can't run anything new on it these days. 
Uh, microwave oven, yes, absolutely, good question. I cleaned out part of my parents' house for a job that had to be done and found a crap ton of slides, those things you put in a projector. Uh, do you have uh, a camera, digital camera of some sort? And if so, let me know. Um, just trying to remember what it's called. It's a slide. Yeah, there are services that will do it for you. They will charge you an arm and a leg, uh, but they will do it for you. But there are also a variety of things like there's, um, there is devices where you basically hook your camera in the top and set it up and you basically put in a slide, click the button, put in the next slide, click the button, and it's going to light it up. And it, yeah, just basically taking a picture of each slide. It, it, it's a box type thing. Uh, there's a way a way of doing it, but yeah, there's there's a tons of wa tons of ways of doing that. Or like I said, if you really just want to um, take the easiest route, like I said, they will charge you a premium, but give in mind that there's a bit of a, a guarantee and less less work. You just send it off, it's done, it comes back. That may be um, maybe worth it for you. Robert Kite, all my internet comes through my phone, no bill. Well. It see depends, yeah. I have internet, on my phone, etc. I think most of us do these days, and some people use it for a hotspot. That's fine. I find that um, the bandwidth, the bandwidth and usage, as well as speed, depending on what you're doing. Like I wouldn't do do my channel over the phone. That wouldn't wouldn't be enough. Just trying to remember what the name of that. Um, What what is that device called again, for making slides? Or ah. well, even beyond what I was talking about, where you take the picture, there is um, uh, scanners. So it's basically like like imagine like a little. Uh, um, like you, you know, your scanner that you do for documents, but they're just really, really small, and they have a light behind it. Put the slide in, and it just scans it. Yeah, twin cam. Got to, got to be, got to have a fair bit of slides and negatives for it to be worth the expense of your own gear. I only suggest this because I know microwave ovens. Uh, father was a photographer, has apparently some beautiful work, a lot of work, and uh, yeah, if he's found, if he says a crap ton, he means a lot. An awful lot and um, uh, let's see I'm looking here just gonna glance at this quickly Epson perfection v600 is listed um, it is an actual scanner so you can scan documents, but it also has an inlay tray for scanning slides. And it's gonna cut, oh, it's $1,500. Okay, never mind that. That's probably more than you wanna spend, depending how many you have. There you go, Brian Ferguson. I used one of those slide devices years ago and they work pretty good. Yeah, it's a shame. I mean, there may be, depending where you live in the world, there may be the opportunity to rent one contact i mean i i'm not sure where you, you'd look to find one but yeah there may be an opportunity to rent one for a month or two i know there's a place uh in australia i never use them but they'll, they'll rent out cameras and lenses and lights and film gear and printers and all sorts of stuff on the creative side so they might have something like that so there might be something similar in your area rent one for for a month or two uh at a fraction of the cost of buying one and then you still get to uh to get them all done see microwave oven did i get you confused with someone else so your dad worked in an administrative capacity he ain't no photographer i apologize i i see this old man brain now i'm racking my brain trying to figure out who i got you confused with damn i have no idea who that is 
it'll come to me. It'll come to me. I'll be like lying in bed tonight. Go, oh, and then I'll completely forget again. I apologize for that. Uh, however, I have remembered that you're not in the States. That's locked in. I embarrassed myself enough times with that. Uh, uh, Curry, so you're, ta you're talking about, yeah, using your, uh, your cell phone as a hotspot, which is fine. And we do that here occasionally, especially when our internet's down, et cetera, or if we're out and about. Uh, no, I'm not going to call you American again. Like I said, I, 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 I've, I've locked that down. Uh, Curry, yeah. One hopes that you're on an unlimited plan. You want to be careful. Be, pay attention to your bandwidth usage because you can really mess yourself up if you're not on, on an unlimited plan. And yeah, your speed's going to vary depending on congestion and bandwidth and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's, it's a good solution for someone who doesn't heavily heavily use the internet if you're just trying to uh catch up on news email a little bit of communication if you are downloading and uploading a lot of stuff or you require a fast connection yeah you probably need uh, a little bit yeah twin cam I'm, i know i'm not demanded someone's father someone's father is a is was it urn i think it was urn his father was a photographer and he's looking at uh, maybe doing a coffee table book of his work. I think it was Earn. That's that's I think where I got that that from. Anyway, for those of you in the background having your own private conversation about Shogun, I will get onto it next. In fact, I might actually sit down with the wife and 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 start it rather than do it myself. Um, we just finished Fallout last night. Uh, if it was me and I started it on one day, I would have binged the whole thing. Uh, but when I'm watching with her, it's it's the end of the day. Her work's done, my work's done. After dinner, yeah, there's only, we only get through like an episode or two. <clears throat> for those of you who like sci-fi, who like fantasy, who like uh, twisted dark humor, who have played the game, any combination of those, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, go watch Fallout. It's 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 definitely worth it. I enjoy it a lot. She doesn't enjoy it quite as much as me, but I think because she doesn't have the game thing, but she did enjoy it. Maybe she didn't enjoy it as much because it kept pointing out, all, oh, that's just like in the game. That's just like in the game. Oh, my God, it's, it's the Red Rocket. You know, all those sort of little things. But, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, she and I will watch Sh or at least give Shogun a try next. And I will tell you the truth. I have not even watched a trailer. That's where I'm at with that. I, I saw that it was coming. I saw article i saw the promo picture on prime that's it i haven't even watched a, i haven't even watched a trailer i don't know what the footage looks like i don't know anything about it beyond that it's a remake of the original which was originally a book by james clavell so yeah i'd be coming in pretty fresh pretty clean uh brian ferguson <laughs> take your pup out He's more important than me. He deserves he deserves your attention and he deserves a little bit of relief. Take him outside. Go for it. Absolutely go for it. Anyway. So yeah, can't really talk too much about Shogun. Yeah, I mean, there's, oh, of course there's Pip Boy themes for the DNA. Absolutely, there's going to be pit boy themes for the DNA, just like there's uh, pit boy themes for your phone and you know anything. Just like there's Elcar. I mean, I'm sure there are Elcar themes for uh, for DNA as well. I mean, anything where there's an interface that is uh, seen enough to become somewhat iconic in a series, there's going to be fans. Yeah, the full body health is your battery percentage. Makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. 
I might, I might have to. It's a tiny little screen though, but I might have to see. I'm gonna put one in there. I heard that the um, the actual Pip Boys that they use in the show, they used iPhones. So if if you guys don't know, the Pip Boy is um, it's a wrist mounted device and it's huge. It's quite it's quite hefty. It's got a screen and it performs a number of functions: monitoring your health, uh, keep keeping and reading memos, monitoring your inventory status allowing you access to certain doors, all sorts of stuff that it can do. And it's got a little screen on the front. And for the, uh, the props they used, they, they built the fake Pip-Boy. And of course they used uh, iPhones as the screen and then they can just program an app, put it on there to show whatever they, they need on it. And um, yeah, apparently the, the, the main actress, she likes to talk with her hands a lot. And apparently through the entire series, she went through four, maybe five, iPhones because she'd go like this and the, the phone would go flying off. It's like, uh, I'm pretty sure they kept a box of spares nearby after the first time. Micro oven, yeah, dick around too long with themes. I used to be into that sort of stuff. Like I used to do theming for uh Windows, obviously, and uh Various devices, any device that you could theme, I'd be sitting there tweaking, tweaking little apps, tweaking little. Um, was never great at it. And I usually take other people's and then redo them. But after a while, I kind of put that aside, not because it wasn't fun or because I wasn't interested in it, because I realized that spending eighteen hours making a fancy screen for myself for a device, or making photographs of movies, yeah. It's one thing or another, right? Just one sec. Hold on. I'm getting some sort of message. There's motion at my driveway. Oh, some sort of mail. And a weird message from Google saying that I can now use biometrics to buy things. It's a weird thing for them to say. It's almost like they knew we were talking about phones and apps. Um, it's that AI, I tell you, it's listening in. There was a comment earlier and I was going to say something about it. What was it? Oh, I remember someone said a comment. It's like, we can talk about that. And then I completely forgot what it was. Uh, I believe my <laughs> and I spent eight hours making a clock for my phone and I don't use it. Yeah. That's always the way. It's always the way. The thing is, was that eight hours well spent of enjoyment or was it eight, eight hours that you've now lost and gone? Could be either. Could be either or. I've spent uh, hours and hours tweaking things or pulling things apart or digging into the files of stuff to try and make something work exactly the way. I remember um, not even that long ago, I think like three or four years ago, Rain Meter. Rain Meter comes up every now and then. It's a suite of both skinning and extra apps and integration with your des desktop. It does a lot of stuff. And yeah, I spent a month and a half tweaking rain meter so that I had uh, calendars floating on the screen and clock hidden in the background and all sorts of stuff. And then, you know, I think I used it for about two weeks and it just got really annoying and I, just, I shut it off, uninstalled, it was done. It's like time wasted. Could have done so much better. <coughs> so many other things I could do. Eight hours of palpable rage. My wife sent me a video the other day. She says, watch this and, and let's have a conversation about it. And uh, I will admit that I got about a third of the way through the video and, and the guy doing the video, I just didn't like him. I didn't like his tone. I didn't like his voice. I didn't like the fact that he was just so flat all the way through and somewhat pretentious at the same time. I wasn't a big fan of him. 
But the basic concept of, what, of this video was how to manage having multiple interests. And you guys know, we've talked about this a lot on the channel, that there are certain things that you kind of have to put to the side or, or a mental line that you have to draw. I would be interested in doing that, but it would just take up so much time and I can't do everything. I, that's where I'm sitting at with this guy uh, or with, with that concept. But he was talking about how to do that, how to have multiple interests and how to make time for yourself. Uh, one of the things, the first things he, he said was pretty basic, but it's like list out all the stuff that you want to do. And that includes like, you know, normal life stuff, but all your interests and then start prioritizing it. Put it in a list of what matters to you from the most to the least. And then you kind of know where to put your time and your energies. Obviously, if something is at number one, but you're not giving it any time, then then you're not doing the right thing for yourself because that's the most important thing that you're interested in. And you've just got so many other things taking it away. So I looked through that, that video and I thought that that was kind of interesting that I think that a lot of people aren't doing that, that they aren't um, balancing their interests. Like there are, like as I mentioned to the wife, there's a lot of things that I could really get into doing there's a passion there i don't feel um i don't feel jealousy that other people get to do them i don't feel left out i know that it's a choice that if i did put myself into those i would get good at it but i don't allow myself to start because i just don't have the time uh welding for example welding welding art would love to, to do that. I've seen so much over the years. Uh, I have ideas for things like that. But setting it up, keeping it clean, creating, collecting, learning how to do it properly, uh, creating all that stuff. You're talking about a full-time artist's job, like, like a lot of time dedicated to that. I couldn't do other things as well. It's not high on my priority list. It's not on the top five. So it's somewhere down to like, like 60. So, you know, I, I will give no time to that because I can't. Um, yeah, just, just I, I mentioned this because I'm, like, I'm curious with those you, you out there watching, like, is this something that you've ever consciously done? Make that list of priorities and realize that I'm not spending enough time on the things that matter and I am spending more time on things that I only kind of, kind of like. Why am I spending 20 hours a week gardening when the only reason I'm doing it is so that the neighbors don't yell at me. I don't care about gardening. I'm really into painting. I spend two hours a week painting. Why am I doing that? Why don't I pay someone to do the gardening and then spend that time painting and then I have more time? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, microwave oven? Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not spending the time playing guitar. And I've got to stop and prioritize that more. Absolutely. But other things are taking up my time. And music is a priority for me. But I'm just not doing it. So that's something where I've got to sit and look at that and question my time. And also turn on the AC. Because for some reason, it just got really warm in here. There we go. Dom Long, I used to do welding years ago. See, see, when you've already got a start in something, whatever it is, when you've got a base level, you've got the intro level knowledge, it's a little bit easier to prioritize your time with that and, and, and jump at it so you don't have to do all that sort of like first steps up, they're always the biggest. But yeah, like I said, <laughs> my nails are, no. Um, or maybe yes, whichever, whichever floats your boat. Um, yeah, what, was I, what am I trying to say here? Yeah, I think we've all got lists, like lists and lists and lists. And, 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 and you can see people do stuff. As, as I said, I have a friend uh, in Nova Scotia who makes goat cheese and uh, makes his own maple syrup. And I look at that and go, that, that's kind of awesome. You know, you're a little bit self-sufficient and you're, you're being crafty and you're creating something that you can enjoy. That's awesome. And we were talking uh, to Advocate for Liberty, who does a lot of stuff like that himself in his own area. And he and his wife are both involved in that. 
and that's a priority for them. So they, they dedicate a certain amount of time to that. Uh, I have friends in town here who are visual artists and they spend a great deal of time either painting or crafting things. I see um, uh, engraving of things, which kind of intrigues me quite a bit. Uh, I see people doing, uh, this is gonna sound weird, and I mentioned it to the wife the other day and she, she, she said, ah, you're, you're becoming a boomer. Not model trains, but dioramas, like setting up tables with handmade castles and grass and trees and stuff. And I, I think it's stuff like that, and it's like, that would be fun. There's no purpose to it. There's no need for it, but it would be fun. It would be enjoyable to learn how to craft styrofoam to look like genuine uh, castle walls and stuff like that. She's into the idea of learning Python. She's always, every now and then, uh, Arduino or Raspberry Pi and stuff like that come up. She's interested in that sort of thing. It's like, yeah, there's this massive list of things that are could be. I have enough interest to know that if I go into it, I'll do it well. I'll, I'll have fun. I'll enjoy it. And that's a big part of, you know, encouraging you to continue and to do it well. But like I've said many, many times, I only have 24 hours and I've probably only got 25 years left. Um, there's only so many things that I can master and can fit into the time that is allotted to me. And if I try to do too many, I end up losing on all of them because I'm doing it all shitty, right? Yeah, you can need a 48-hour day. Yeah, to, to even, even start something. So yeah, prioritizing that list, making that list of things that matter to you and putting it in those firearms. No, no, no. I live in Australia. Um, I mean, yeah, making things look like firearms and walking around in the States, bad idea. Also bad idea here because, you know, very, very, very legal. Don't want to do that sort of stuff. Lab works. My list is to get my hands on all the jiggling blanks and all the different metallic threads. I have absolutely no idea what that means, but I have absolute support in you. I hope that you achieve that. What is a jig? Oh, jigging. I, said, I thought it said jiggling. Jigging blanks. Hmm. Dom Long, but that is messy. Have you ever cut any? Of, I have cut styrofoam in the past. It is messy. It is difficult. Carving it, it's a whole thing. And, and I say styrofoam. I throw that out. I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. If I was to set up a table and say, okay, I'm going to build a hill. It's going to have a castle on it. It's going to come down. There's going to be a lake over here. I'm going to do fake grass. going to get little tiny people. I'm going to paint them like D&D figures. It's going to be beautiful. Would I build the castle out of styrofoam? Is that what I would use? Or would I use clay? Or would I use, um, I don't know. What would I use? I don't know. I don't know what would, the, what would be the best thing. I just throw it styrofoam as an option. I've seen it, I've seen it done for things. Um, I don't know, because I'm not delving in any further than the, hey, that would be fun. But I'm not going to do it, because, you know, like I said, don't have a huge amount of time, and it doesn't seem to relate too much to my, my, my major focuses. Now, with all this being said, I'm not saying you should only have one or two interests and nothing on the side. Obviously, we need to be fully rounded people and it's good to have things that you go away from. I'm into this and then I go into that, you know, when in my downtime, et cetera, or when I have to wait in between or just to have, um, yeah, other, other stuff going on in your life. I would I, I absolutely think that you should have some of that. I'm just saying, be, be, be mindful of, of where you allocate your time. I think a lot of us go through life, and there are all those people that get to, to, to an age where they regret what they haven't done, and a lot of it is to do with, yeah, I just didn't allocate any time for myself. I didn't allocate any time to learn and grow. I didn't allocate enough time on the things that I care about. I allocated on, on working and eating and sleeping and keeping the neighbors happy by mowing the front lawn and keeping the family happy by going to all the family events that I had to. And I just never did the stuff as much that I wanted to. Um, you got you to spend that, 
that time on yourself. Try making wine. Yeah. See, Dom. Oh. Yeah. Making wine, making beer, making mead. Yeah. All those things. They're of interest, but very, very low. See? And that's what I, that's where I go. It's like, I could make wine. Or I could just go to the store and buy it. And I could do other things. And for me, like I said, for my friend in, in Nova Scotia, making he makes mead from scratch. That's awesome. He never has to go to the store. He's, always, he's got stores of it. He's got all sorts of stuff. He doesn't have to worry about that. And it's important to him. It's, it's, it's high on his list to do that. And so he gets a satisfaction drinking his own product. No pun intended. But for me, it's like, it's not that important. It's not that high on that list. I could, but it doesn't really matter. I would rather do other, other things. I'd rather work on, on, on film and photography and, you know, VFX, which I should probably spend more time mastering and stuff like that. I'm sure, yeah, LabWorks, I'm sure meat is awesome. But is it awesome enough for me to make my own? And I don't, I don't, I don't know that that time is worth that when I could dedicate that to other things. I could dedicate that time to hanging out with you guys and chatting. Sorry, I have a window here with YouTube distractions. I need to shut that off. Uh, Labworks. A collection of fishing and a collection of desktop CNC machines. Ooh. Hmm. Desktop CNC. See, there's, see, that's like the, the 3D printing thing and the CNC thing is like, and uh, lathes. All of these things attract me and interest me. And then I wonder how much do I really get out of it and how high do I put that on the, the want to do priority list. And yeah, these, these things, they're interesting. But like I said, you, you can't be a master of everything. So then again, there, and there is also that side of things too, where it's like I would go hard. I'd never go lightly. I go hard. So yeah, maybe a little bit too much. Uh, Curry is saying, is in Australia much uh, little minor or more major rivers or streams where the fishermen can catch trouts? Um, trout. Labworks, you can answer the question. I do not know squat about fishing in Australia. I know that there are fishing people here. It's a hobby. It's an interest. It's a passion for a lot of people. I think from what I've seen, the majority of fishing might be coastal rather than river. But I might be wrong with that because, like I said, I don't know a squad about fishing here. I do think that trout is not an Australian fish. You're, you're not going to be trout fishing here. Um, yabbies? I don't know. I don't know. Labworks, you, you can fill us in on that. You, this, this is your time to shine because you, you are the plenty of trout fishing. See, like I said, I know squat. For some reason, I was just like, we don't do trout here. It's not a thing. That's like Europe and Canada. Yeah, we don't do trout. Do we? I don't know. Twin cam. Yes. I have 30-ish remote controls I haven't touched in years. 15K in camera gear. 20 wristwatches, half of which he built. Two home-built PCs and a hi-fi system. I absolutely don't need any more hobbies yes i hear you i'm exactly the same exactly that same boat i've got um over the last 10 15 years i've managed to actually trim it down even a bit further uh, but i understand exactly what you're talking about it's just too many things too much investment of cash and capital too much investment of time and not enough to focus on on various things
Dom Long, tell me, if they would make a camera that would be like an X-ray camera, would you want to use it? Um, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are, I mean, there's, there's cameras for different purposes and, and different needs, and some are more, let's say, creative than others, more... Um, have more potential for sort of cinematic use and that sort of stuff, which is where my primary interest lies. <coughs> but specialist cameras of um, of unique vision, let's put it that way. Yeah, I absolutely love to play with them. I don't know that if someone came across, uh, it, say, say someone put out a camera t tomorrow that was capable of of proper X-ray. It's just a normal camera. And click, it takes a digital image, you can download it, and all it does is x-ray. It's not, it's not good for anything else, it just does x-ray photos, um, and it costs three grand. Would I spend three grand for a one-trick pony that I'm not going to use all the time, which has a really interesting niche appeal, but doesn't really integrate into what I'm doing? Probably not. If I was a doctor, yeah, being able, maybe these aren't, the final diagnostic tool, but yeah, quick shot, absolutely. If I was um, working in any sort of trade where I need to see what's going on behind the walls, maybe find out where that where that pipe actually goes or where that wiring is, again, you know, very, very useful diagnostic tool, and I could see something being made for those sort of circumstances. I wouldn't spend a huge amount of cash. Personally, I'd love to play with one, though. Just like there is a camera out there. In fact, the new the newest version just came out. Um, there's a camera out there that does uh, two and a half thousand frames per second. Uh, no, what is it? It does it does one thousand frames per second at two point six K, which does lend itself to some cinematic uses. I mean, it's actually kind of kind of cool. Um, it is somewhere in the, the range of $14,000 per camera. No, no. The new one is, I think, $7,000. It can only film for so long. It requires some specialist uh, hard drives to capture. They are massive files. Uh, there's certain limitations to how you can use it, etc. But yeah, it's a, it's a fucking brilliant camera. 2.6K. Not as good as four, but you can upscale that fairly easily. Um, and even if you didn't, that's a that's a good enough resolution considering you're capturing a thousand frames per second. That means that um, yeah, popping balloons or dropping water, exploding light bulbs, all that sort of stuff. Not as amazingly intense as on the slow mo guys channel, that sort of stuff, but. Uh, for commercial work, especially uh, advertising and stuff, you get some absolutely beautiful footage. Um, if you're slowing down a second, you're just getting that drop hitting the top of a glass or something like that. Yeah, perfect camera to film those RDAA coils spinning. Think about it, like one second of the spit. I mean, you'd see that, that, that little spark, it'd just go... It would take so long to get over there. They're absolutely amazing cameras. I'd love to absolutely, absolutely love to play with those. It's, 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 it's a goal. It's a huge goal of mine. Seven grand is too much for a device that would ultimately, after that first honeymoon period of playing, probably get used less than 8% of the time of my work. It's not, it's not a valid investment for me. But yeah, the, the specialist cameras, I mean, they do, they do intrigue me. Um, the camera that I sold to Birdie was destined for modification. Um, and I decided to, I wasn't going to do it, and I, sent, I sold it to him instead. Uh, there is a modification you can do. You basically, uh, it, it's tricky, and I wouldn't want to do it myself, but there's a, a company in Melbourne that do it. Uh, your sensor takes in all all the light right and there is a uh shield a filter over the sensor that blocks out certain wavelengths because they'll they'll interfere with your image they'll give you a crappier image so it just blocks all those out 
what can be done though is, is a modification where you take the shield off and you're basically putting on a, a different version, an inverted version. Uh, you can have broad spectrum, which just allows everything through. Uh, but much more interesting is the infrared one, which basically blocks everything but infrared. And you end up with, it, it, it's kind of a black and white image, although it can be colored. But yeah, they are absolutely, absolutely stunning images. Like, like infrared photography is incredibly, incredibly interested. Again, you have to find a camera that can be modified. You have to send it off for modification, which is a cost. You can use the same lenses or whatever that you're using with everything else, but it becomes a one trick pony. It is, yeah, the IR mod, it becomes a, a dedicated device for one specific thing. And I haven't been able to bring myself to uh, funding something so niche, but absolutely. I mean, you, you, you'd be hard pressed to find a photo enthusiast who doesn't look at these things, whether it's high speed or IR or, or you know, X-ray if it comes out, and, and, and it doesn't have a desire to play with them. Maybe not the motivation to purchase them, but definitely desire to play. I mean, the first time I, I, I heard about 360, um, I finally got one, but the first time I heard about one, I absolutely wanted one. Absolutely, I was like, that, that's amazing, that's absolutely cool. Definitely wanna play with that. Um, Microwave oven. You're talking about the uh, high speed cameras, combine it with Vanta Black for a few pure contrast? Yeah, absolutely. Thing is, okay, so Vanta Black is really, really interesting as a background substance, something that's really, really intrigued me because, yeah, you don't have to worry about how you light things. You don't have to worry about the situation. You could drop a Vanta Black background in bright daylight and take a picture against it. It's just Subject against the black, solid black. Absolutely. It's very, very cool. You can, with some skill and knowledge, and probably using strobes, flashes, um, you could actually do that with any background. You can turn any background into pure black. You just need to light your subject properly. Um, so it, it, it's an interesting subject, but you can actually get around it if you've got enough light to work with and enough space to create distance and of course knowledge and control of your camera labworks is talking about fishing and i do i know nothing about fishing honestly last time i went fishing i think i was 12 up in Alaska. Yeah, Mike Oven. I fished today for salmon, but I got bored after 30 seconds. So I just jumped in the water and killed someone with my hatchet. In Minecraft. <laughs> Love that, that little addendum. It's like, yeah. Let is here. Absolutely here. Twink him, that's, yeah, that's what I do for my, my macro shit. Look, like I said, with enough light on a subject and the right settings for what you're doing and enough space, you can turn, like you can, you can have an, a window, bright daylight, green plants, blue sky, and you can use that as your backdrop. And you can turn that to be pure black if you want to. It's just a case of, of knowledge and skill of what you're doing. But they said the real trick is then you have to light your subject that much brighter to balance that out. Hold on one sec before I switch batteries. Just like to the same token, any studio based photographer who's doing portraits does not need a gray background. Unless you're talking about texture or concrete or something like that, but a solid gray, you don't need it. You need a white background, you need a black background. Now you have every shade of gray you want. It's 
just a case of how you set things up. Every white background can be any color from white to black. Having a black background gives you more, like an actual black background gives you more um, options. But yeah, you can turn anything, anything, any white into any shade just by ex exposure. Twin cam. Rip through batteries on my flashes. That's why. That's why you need some of these. No batteries. Plugs into the wall. It'll do the job. And I know I say that with some arrogance, but uh, that's the Adochrone RX1. That is a really, really old kit. Um, I don't think that that model is actually still out there, uh, but yeah, you can you can you can get that kit for for fairly inexpensive. That kit, ironically, I uh, can't remember what brand it was. Was it? Go I think it was Godox. Back, this is this is a sign of how companies change and evolve. Godox are now. Um, an accepted and known mid-level, decent quality brand. They're not something that's um, <laughs> twin cam. They're, 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 not some, they're not a brand that professionals, high-end professionals use, uh, that they admit, but they're, they're an accepted brand. But I bought a Godox set, uh, I think it was 250, it was three strobes, some shitty stands. A crappy trigger. It was like ages, like we're talking about 17 years ago. And I had it for two years and it got recalled. And the company that, that I bought it from, um, they, they reached out to me and said, well, we're, we're going to recall that. So we're going to send you uh, something better. What do you want? Just take a pick. Uh, you, can, you can get any of these or you can throw in some money and get something more. And so for 50 bucks more, I ended up getting the, uh, the Island Chrome kit and it's, it's, it's been solid. I ended up buying two more and, um, yeah, I've got four of them floating around here now and, and they are, they are good. They're solid. The only thing is that in some of them, um, my modeling light has uh, broken. I'm just going to check something though. Two, three, four. Yeah. RX one. RX one. That's the one I'm looking at. So in Australia, you can get those heads, those exact heads, for about three eighty nine to four hundred dollars. Honestly, if you're doing studio work, like I understand that that um, portable strobes, and I'm considering it for other things. Portable strobes are great for for getting out and stuff. These things have been a mainstay in my work, and there's so much more power and so much more control. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely recommend them for, for that entry level struggle. I don't need anything bigger or fancier than that. Uh, let's see. Um. And yeah, microwave oven. I know. I know. Uh, Twin Cam does. I mean, I'm I'm advising him to go buy stuff because I'm a bad influence, and I always like people to get bigger, better, more gear. And I know that he's a sucker for it. But with that said, I also know that he does some 
absolutely phenomenal work. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Um, would they overheat in a 75 pick stack? No, no, I've done, I've done up to 300, 3, 380 stacks with those. Absolutely no overheating. Um, you do need to give time. Um, so if you're doing a stack, you, you, you don't want to power through like, you need, you need to give it the refresh time. So it's going to be like, I don't know, a third of a second or something between each shot. But other than that, I haven't really timed it, but yeah. I mean, that um, little video I did a while back where I was using uh, a, a ma automatic lens, just a basic Lumix lens, so it's not the, the closest or fanciest of, of macro work, but uh, yeah, I set that up automated. I set it using the app, and I was doing... Um, a bunch of stacks, a couple hundred, and I was using those for that. Quite fine. Not a problem. Speaking of which, I just realized yesterday I went to go do something, and I realized that my um, my copy of Helicon Focus has expired. And I knew, I knew when we got it. I, I said to the wife, I said, we should get the full version. She's like, no, we'll get the subscription. I'm like, really? And we got the subscription which is a one year subscription. It's not auto renewed. So um, yeah, I have, I have no stacking software as at the moment. I'll have to go have a conversation about that. Add it to the list. And unfortunately it does mean that this time, um, oh, you're, you're using DSLR, twin cam, mirror slap. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you leave your mirror down when you're, uh, or do you do you have mirror lock on your camera where you can lock it in a position when you start? Uh, which might speed things up for you. Anyway, yeah, as I was saying, yeah. I knew when we got it last year, I guess it was, the year thing, that I probably should have got the full version um, and just been done with it. But uh, we got the year version, and this is the second time. So at this point, if we buy one more year, um, may as well have just bought the full thing anyway. Uh, software, right? <coughs> Been a while though. I haven't done any any. Yeah, your helicon can never ends, but it can't be updated. Yeah, there there is that, and that's 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 where we see you got to sort of balance things out. It's like, is it worth the full price and being done now, and like no future additions, no improvements, etc. Um, or is it worth paying continuously forever, but having every new upgrade, et cetera? I looked at it. I was even considering um, the light version. Actually, I have a I have a, a question with you, with you, Twin Cam. Which version do you have? Because I was looking at, it, I couldn't see that that the difference between light and the full version really gave me anything that I was going to use. So. Maybe I'll just end up going for the light version, or at least for a year, give it a try. I think it's only 50 bucks. Yeah, Birdman, we know you have no problem doing stacking, but have you done a 75 stack? Ah. Uh, twin cam, shh. Lin Loy, starting to watch Fallout. Good man. Let me know how you enjoy it and, and what you think when you get to the end. It's a good show. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And yeah, I definitely think Birdman is 100% the, the master stacker. That reminds me. I need to talk to Birdman soon. Birdman, I need to talk to you. Um, you know, it's been a while we had that conversation but there was discussion that you had that you were interested in doing some uh bird photography that you were interested in birds and that you were looking at at, at moving into getting outside taking some shots of birds etc um nothing huge i'm just curious if you uh, um moved in that direction if you've taken any steps if you're trying to play around with it and also, um, I might have a gift for you. We'll see. 
we will see. I have something there that you might be intrigued by. Might help you out quite a bit, actually, with that. We need to talk about that sometime soon. There are many, many fields. Like, you get into something, and there are many different fields that you can get into. There's, there's in the photography field, there's um, sort of product photography, and there is uh, portrait photography, and there's event photography, and there's street photography, and there's, of course, nature photography, and there's uh, landscape photography, and all that stuff. And then there are subsections in each one of them. So um, if you look at uh, nature photography, there is breaks down into, um, uh, like I said, they're very specific things. Like people who do birds do birds. People who do animals do animals. Some people do a little bit of both, but most people are very, very specific about where their interest is. I have to say, that whole, I'm a hunter, but I don't kill things. I sit in a shelter with my, my, my thing trained on that tree for seven hours waiting for the perfect shot. Absolutely, absolutely not my thing. Uh, Birdman, yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. I, I might have something for you. I might have something for you sitting over there. I realized uh, an unused treasure that I have might be right up your alley. Uh, but yeah. That whole nature thing. I think, I think I've I've become more enamored with products and stuff. Not because oh I don't have to go out, but because I don't have to wait for people. A lot of the stuff I was doing before, like this seems weird, but fashion photography, I'm really good at it. I'm really good at that that, that sort of stuff. But there's too many freaking people. You have the subjects, you have the makeup people, you have assistants, you have a craft table, you have the whole thing going on, and I love doing that. And the occasions I've done it, I'm really good at it. But I hate dealing with that many people. I like to be able to sit here for a while and then, um, you know, just go, I'm gonna do this, and then start setting things up, take pictures of, 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 of things. And things, unlike models, they don't have bad days and they don't have bad attitudes and you, they just stay where you put them, you know, things so that that works really well for me. And I think I've fallen more into that, not because of a, a better or more innate talent, uh, but just because it kind of works for me. I think bird photography and that sort of stuff, people who like to go out into the forest and just sit there. Those people work really well for it because it's just, I've got a reason to sit here now. Um, works really, really well. Uh, got a question there. Brian Ferguson, speaking of batteries, do you think shortly we'll encounter a very dense LiPo pack that has the ability to charge via a micro solar panel? Um, I don't know. I I haven't been paying that much attention to to charging um, and battery technology. Like I said, I know that graphene batteries are coming soon, and they're very exciting. And I think that they probably will end up superseding things like lipos simply because they hold so much more power, they charge so much faster, uh, and you can get a greater um, greater capacity at a smaller, lighter weight. And I think for things like drones and stuff, that's just going to completely uh, change the game. And I think for things like RCs and stuff, like a graphene battery, it's, it's a tiny little thing that plugs into the bottom or the back. It takes no weight. Uh, you can carry 12 of them in your bag, keep going all day. The big thing about drones and RCs is that you get in the car and you go to where you're going, and you go out, and 20 minutes later you're done because your battery's zero dead. Um, if you're smart, you might get an hour because you brought two extra batteries. Yeah, so I think graphene graphene will really change the game for a lot of stuff. Um, will that have uh, the ability to, to charge solar? I don't know. I kind of hope that it does. I hope that most things do, just because you know we need that technology in our world. But I don't know if lipos will will do it. I think lipos are on their their end phase. Where 
right here for time. It's 11.04. It's not a bad time. It's a good time to be. Battery tech is the best example of two more weeks, I promise. Yeah, graphenes have been promised to us for, oh God, longer than, than, than they should have been. But, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, we, we were talking earlier quite a bit about AI. AI is a concept that we probably originated in the late 50s and 60s in fiction. It starts to show up in mass media in the late 60s and into the 70s. Becomes quite a consistent concept in, um, in, in, in the public mind come the 80s. And they've been working on it or working on stuff like that uh, for at least the last 15, 20 years. But we hit that point, that little point right there, about a year ago, where all of a sudden things just start clicking because they finally got to that point where things could start happening. And I think we're looking at the same thing with, um, with battery tech. It's, 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 it's certain things they've been working on, but they haven't been figured out enough of the right things to make it work, to make it <coughs> consistent, to make it safe, to make it economically worth making. But once we do, boom, you'll see, once the batteries hit the market within a year, they'll have ones that are twice as, 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 as small, but twice the capacity, and it will just start snowballing. I mean, eventually, you'll be able to power your, your, um, your 400 watt mod with what looks like a, ba a watch battery. Or you'll be able to put a battery in a thing and that's it, it's a lifelong battery. It's like never needs to be, never needs to be um, charged. Cause, cause, yeah. You could use a graphene battery mod. Can you imagine it though? I mean, it would just be incredibly powerful and incredibly small and lightweight. It'd be, it'd be like a mech mod the size of, of, a, of a short pencil. We are coming up on the last, well, not coming up. We're into the last half hour. So let me just say, oh, why did I close that window? I have the distracting window in front of me. Go away, distracting me. Uh, we last half hour. So any questions, any comments, any thoughts that you want to share, throw them in now. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait till, um, well, you're going to have to wait till Sunday, aren't you? So yeah, throw those in and I will do my very, very best to answer them. Uh, what? Microwave oven, what's he gonna do with a cobalt lithium mine? He'd just have to sell his property to someone who can take advantage of that. It's not gonna help him. Well, give him some money in the short run, I guess. Uh, but yeah, there's a big difference in having a mine and being able to do something with it. Uh, Vaping Bic, good evening. Hope you're doing well, hope you're okay. Uh, Yeah, nuclear power. See, see, see. This, 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 this is where Birdman needs to watch. Um, uh, he needs, he needs to watch Fallout because the, uh, what do you call it? The fusion core, which they they use to power the the power armor. That's what he needs. One of those with an RDA on top. Absolutely, it would last him. It would last him for life. Never need recharging. Hmm. Anyway, yes, not much else to get into with Oh, what's going on there? Yeah, Mike Gravon. Yeah, you, you're not wrong there. It says, despite the promises of higher intrinsic safety on these new battery techs, there's still the deal of enormous en energy densities, and if that goes wrong, it goes wrong hard. Yeah, we are... Um, yeah, you, you're absolutely not wrong with that. 
and we are a, a, a society that prides itself on its convenience to the point where we overlook a lot of stuff. We, if it's convenient and simple and easy, oh yeah, a few people blow up every now and then, but this means that we get to carry X in our pockets, et cetera. You know, we tend to, to go for that, that path. So that's a bit of a concern. Absolutely a bit of a concern. Uh, I do it hook you with that, Birdman. Fusion Core RDA. No charging. And it's already built like a Mac. It's just a big tube. I think that would suit you. Suit you quite fine. Actually, I think what you what you really need is the full power armor. Just full body suit. Big military helmet. Little mouthpiece. Just screw in a bottle of e-liquid in your armpit. Another one in the other armpit. Just fills your helmet with, with vape whenever you want. That, that's what you need. I am hoping we are in that sort of uh, negative period. Talking about vaping and stuff. Negative press, misunderstanding, uh, propaganda, lies, etc. All sorts of stuff out there. But I am hoping that we get to the point where you know we sort of overcome that. And yes, armpits for extra flavor. You gotta gotta keep that warm. Um I am hoping that that worldwide we eventually get to the point where it's it's not a big deal and the idea of consuming something for a little bit of alertness, uh, a little bit of focus, a little bit of um get up and go, whether it's caffeine, whether it's nicotine, uh, whether it's other forms of stimulants, etc. We, we've, we've abused ourselves historically. That's what we do. And at some points, yes, we've gone down excessive paths. But I don't see there being a huge issue. I mean, yeah. The idea that, that um, you know, you might carry three or four in your shirt pocket or, or whatever and just have a quick puff before you, you engage in an activity or a quick puff before bedtime to ease you to sleep. Maybe there's a little bit of melatonin and a touch of heroin. Who knows? Um, just to help you sleep better. Kind of like that whole Elvis Presley thing where it's like too many chemicals in his system, but... You know, enough to get him up and going for the show, but then he'd have to take something to relax him. And then he was talking too much, so he got to take something else to calm him down. And you know that general cocktail throughout the day just to to balance things out. I think that's that's taking things to an extreme, and it's probably a little less um, understanding of what these substances do. But I think on the milder level, I mean, my stepson had not the one my older stepson had issues sleeping for a while. Got a prescription for melatonin every night. A couple of melatonins, glass of milk, boom, he's out. And he was he was doing that for about a year or so. And then his sleep regulated. Um, nobody nobody bats an eye at that. Nobody, you know, you got a prescription, you went to a doctor. Okay, fine, there's that thing going on. But the idea of, of, of taking a supplement to make life a little easier. Nobody bats an eye at that. The idea... That coffee, I mean, I, I watched the thing. It was a really interesting little video. Um, it was about advertising. And the guy showed uh, coffee beans. There's two, ba two basic versions that he did. Most of it was about the second one. And the first one was like, I could do an ad like this. And he showed the coffee. And he showed it's coffee spinning. And he showed the beans. And he showed a cup of coffee. And yeah, it's, a, it's an ad for coffee. And then he did another one. And... It basically goes through the same routine twice. The first is open the fridge and get the milk out. Um, make the cup. No, no, no coffee. He he says he gets the milk out. He pours a bowl of cereal and he puts the milk away. Uh, but he leaves the fridge open. He doesn't put the cap on properly. He puts the milk in the uh, sink instead of the fridge and he pours the milk and it splashes everywhere. Cut. Do the same thing again, except it starts with a cup of coffee very very quick makes a cup of coffee and then he does it all perfectly fine without spilling or messing or anything idea being that caffeine woke him up 
caffeine focused his, his, focused his mind. Now he was doing this video as an example of storytelling versus just showing products. And the story he was telling was without a second thought, his mind that it's a bit humorous that without coffee we're all a bit klutzy and that this really focuses our mind and yeah it's a good way of selling the coffee it's, it's a humorous little uh, 20 second ad and i'm watching it going yeah but this is telling us that this concept is accepted it's normalized it's it's understood if you take this chemical into your brain you will be more focused and more um, capable throughout your day. And I'm watching that going, but why is that okay? I could do an ad where I show you stumbling, being awkward, talking to strangers, getting all the wrong examples, examples on your exam. Let's do that again. Roll back, take a big puff on your vape. <sighs> Walk up the stairs, don't stumble. Talk to the girl without anxiety. You're feeling calm. Sit down, do the exam. Your mind is focused. You've got the right answers. That would be considered propaganda. I'm selling drugs. What's the fucking difference? This is what I'm saying. So I'm hoping we're getting to the world with the idea. I mean, Viagra. Viagra, huge thing. Became huge. Popularized. In, in, you know, you're old. You can't get a heart on. Take a little blue pill. So you can go do that thing that you want to do and do it again and again and again for the next eight and a half hours. Um, make sure you take it an hour before you need it. Chemicals. Chemicals to adjust your body, to regulate your body, to regulate your behavior. Without a second thought, accepted. Caffeine to get you through the day, accepted. Um, melatonin to help you sleep, accepted. You know? Uh, a little bit of Valium because you're a housewife and your life is so stressful. Accepted. Puff on nicotine. Ooh. You're an evil shill. You're trying to addict our kids. Every time I, I hear this, I mean, now that I'm not out there as much, I can say this to you quite literally. Every time I hear them say, oh, creating a new generation of nicotine addicts, my first thought is, so what? So what? Who cares? They don't care. I don't care. Does no damage. Does no harm. Gets them through the day. Great. I hear creating a new a generation of people who know how to self-medicate and focus themselves. Ridiculous. Even Wall Street Journal did a hit piece on the Zen. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, 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 they hit on nicotine over and over and over. There's no basis in it. And the idea, like I said, of chemically adjusting yourself, I mean, it, it's, cons it, 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 it's accepted. It's understood. It's, it's a normal part of our society. And yet we put judgment and value on certain things and not others. Curry, let me respond to your, your statement there. My dear brother gets, is 60 years of old, 60 years of old, 60 years of age in two months, and he's still smoking tobacco. I'm so worried about him and his dangerous habit. Here's the thing. Your brother is 60. He's an adult. He knows his mind. He knows his body. He knows his way. And he, I'm assuming, has been exposed to vaping, probably from you and the rest of the world and he's choosing not to go there that's his call and this is where we're at with this it's his call and if he chooses to not have extra years at the end that's his call and if he chooses to make decisions now that he'll end up paying for in discomfort in those last few years again that is his call you can't force someone you can't lead someone you can only expose them to and then support. Love your brother. Be there for him. 
Don't push him too hard and let him choose his own path. And that's where we have to be with these things. We cannot uh, lead people by the nose or force them to make choices. Um, can't force someone to quit. We know, I mean, like many, many of us who are, are nicotine addicts, if we're getting it through t tobacco, there's probably a reason for that. There's probably a self-medication portion to that. It's helping him in one way or another. That's why he keeps coming back to it. And that's why at the age of 60, despite all, all the other stuff that's been out there, he hasn't quit yet. All the people who were lightweight smokers, I only smoke socially because my friends do and it's a thing to do with my hands at parties, they quit. They quit 30 years ago. Those people, they, the first, oh, it's going to kill me. I smell bad. I'm done. As soon as you put it up a, a buck, I quit. That's it. And they did. The people who needed it because nicotine helps them focus or helps them with their anxiety or all that stuff. Um, yeah. Twin Cam, yeah. Your, your, your Mrs. Duels, uh, yeah, exactly. You're happy for each vape that, that she, or cigarette that she doesn't. Yeah, pushing does nothing, absolutely. You can't force someone. You can't pin them down. You can't make them do what you want to do, regardless of, of what it is. You can attempt to encourage them. You can attempt to teach them uh, at a certain point, especially in that case where you're talking about an adult. They know their mind. They know their life. Yeah, all you're going to do is, 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 is get them to push you away. So... You just kind of have to accept that they will do what they do. It is, it is somewhat sad. Like, don't be worried and scared. Just accept that his time is allotted. It's from beginning to end. It is whatever it is, shorter or longer based on his decisions. But you just appreciate it for what it is and him for what he is. It's, yeah, it's, it's a difficult place to be. I know my sister, I, I gave her the heart spiel at the beginning with vaping uh, and yeah, she's shown interest once or twice, but never really jumped, never really taking the full step. I think she's tried a few disposables and stuff like that, but yeah, she's never really cottoned onto it. And I have to accept that, that that's her choice. She's five years older than me, a bit more stuck in her way. So she, she'd be 60 this year. Yeah. And she's probably not going to do it. And I have to just let that be I like, I'm, I have a choice of being an annoyance to her or having a decent relationship and just letting her make her own choices. Unfortunately, I think that's the case with a lot of things in life. Unless it's impacting on other people around you, there's not a lot you can do. I have no idea. What is the, what is the price of smoking in Norway? Harry, is it is it I'm assuming it would be quite expensive. Birdman, yeah, same thing. Can't get your missus to quit. I mean think think think, think of that. You've got an advocate, you've got a public personage. You've got every flavor imaginable. You've got the ability, no offense, Birdman, but the ability to get any device, any device in the world that she would want, he could put it in her hand. Guaranteed. You can buy it from this base, buy it with that place, get that person to say, he can find it. He'll put it in her hand. She don't want to. And that's her. That's her decision. He's got to deal with that. That's a really hard spot to be in when it's your partner. In the same house, like you smoke and I've quit. Um, but yeah. And then you get those stories. Vaping Bic left a pod device at a friend this Saturday. He really likes it. He hasn't bought a new pack of cigs since, uh, since, since then because he hasn't smoked them all yet. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes you have that, that thing where you show someone. I've told the story before where I didn't, I didn't have faith. I didn't have hope. I didn't expect it to work. And I knew from the first puff, oh, this, this is it. This is it. First puff was like, I have mentally, I have quit now. I still have smokes, 
I've only had one puff of a vape in my life. This is the first vape I've ever seen, ever. Aside from pictures online, this is the first one that's been around. First time I've ever smelled what vape smells like. I quit. That doesn't happen for everyone. A lot of people are very, very gung-ho. Very, very gung-ho. 43 Australian dollars for a 45 gram of rolling tobacco in yeah so that's 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 a little bit less expensive than here but still pretty high pretty pretty darn high alien bell i will check that out a little bit later absolutely collins collins a hero absolutely a hero but yeah, back to my original point is that, yeah, we are in that um, so the dark times, let's call it that. I, I'm kind of, I'm hoping, I don't know if I'll live to, to be in that world. I don't know if we'll get there soon. But the idea that, that, you know, a little puff of vape doesn't always have to be nicotine. We need to get through this period to get to the next period where it's, it could be all sorts of things. Something to wake you up, something to focus your mind, something to help you sleep eat better, something to increase your appetite, something to decrease your appetite, um, something to replace snacking. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a perfect transmission system for a lot of things like that. Um, something to 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 ease the pain. What if you're you're nauseous? There are things that anti nauseants. You just sort of sit there in a hospital bed while you're waiting to be seen and just slowly puffing away on a device that tastes like cinnamon and decreases your nausea. I mean, these things are all possible. They're definitely possible, and they're not dangerous or deadly in any any sense. I'm kind of kind of hoping we get to that point. Mm. Yeah, microwaves, oven. You, yeah, you, you, you like. It's like you're talking about my my wife there, except, yeah, sick mods to use all the re-wicking, all the refilling, all the nicotine, like all that stuff. I'll take care of it. You know, just just what do you want? At, at, at my height, when the shelves were filled with stuff, it was all there. And what does she want? One e-liquid. One device. It's a pod. That's eventually, that's all she wanted. But hey, as long as it worked for her, and still is working for her. Anyway, with that, we're down to the last couple of minutes of the show. So I'm going to take the time to say thank you guys for hanging out with me, uh, spending some time chatting. Again, as always, we've covered a fair amount of territory in the last couple of hours, from uh, new gear coming out to the impact of AI, not just on image creation and photography, but uh, just the world in general. Uh, what else have we, we've talked about? A ton of different things. More than I can actually remember. Might need to actually rewatch the replay so I can get it all. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate your attention and your time as always. Uh, and if you would consider uh, or would like to purchase me a brand new Black Magic camera, get in touch. I'll give you my shipping address. Because yeah, seventeen grand, not really in my wheelhouse. Uh, microwave oven. It's not. It's not a case of gender. It's not a case of gender roles. You just need the right partner. Yeah, I'm sure you could find someone who will will take over and build and rewick and take care of you, and love you, and look after you. You deserve it. You definitely deserve it. Carrie says, uh, "Thank you, sir. I can't live my brother's life. It pisses me off though, because I know my brothers know that vaping is difficult." and that's why he doesn't switch look it, it is or isn't depending on the person 
Uh, and again, like I said, he, he doesn't switch because he doesn't switch. And that's a combination of a multitude of things in his mind and in his heart. And you just have to let that be and just, just love him for what he is, ultimately. It really isn't uh, a magic bullet to uh, doing that. Microwave oven, don't do that. Don't, don't slice it off. No. Twin cam. I have tits, but I still have to react myself. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure there are things that your partners do for you that you, you appreciate just as much. Well, you never know. You never, you never know. And does it have to be in your village? Set your, go, go further abroad. Increase your, 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 your whatever, whatever it is. Uh, cool tech dreamer. I appreciate you. I do. I don't say it enough. I appreciate you. I appreciate the rest of you. I honestly do. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'm going to take things easy for the next couple of days. I'm not going to rush too much. Um, I've got some video stuff to do. I've got some exploring, experimenting stuff to do. And then we'll be back on Sunday for uh, more of this stuff, but uh, with, with Squidly. Birdman, you uh, look after yourselves. Give me a shout when you got a chance. And the rest of you, have a great weekend. Have a great time. Look after yourselves. Reach out to people that you love. All that good stuff because, you know, life is short. And, you know, keeping to ourselves does no good. It, 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 being scared to tell people you care about them it doesn't help in any way it, it just makes you um makes you lonely so reach out let people know you love them i love you guys so with that said take care nobody told me i left that text on the screen for half the stream <laughs>